Alec has what we have to say. Hundreds of small craft led by six fire tugs making fountains of water formed an escort flotilla and four wasp helicopters flew past in salute. In the city, the Financial Times ordinary share index was down 10 points an hour ago at 529.8. BBC Radio News. Oh my God, we made it. Well done, Charles. He wouldn't let me down. God, that was close. <laughs> Welcome to Introduction to Visual Art. This week we are talking about video art. Let's talk about this movie we just saw. Uh, it is by Christian Marclay called The Clock from 2010. I will say that the video is usually uh, played in an art gallery. And what we just saw here is a person in the art gallery uh, recording the video on their iPhone. So it's a little bit of a, I guess, a stolen, stolen image. But beyond that, what do we see? What are the similarities between each of the clips that we saw? Well, there are clocks in each of them, each of the images, and it seems like the time in the, each clock steps forward just a bit, like about one minute per clip. This video is actually a 24 hour long video that is set to the time of the day. So when a person uh, goes to view the video in the gallery, they're in this dark space watching these clips that are back to back to back to back. But those clips are telling time. I find it really interesting and I think it's a great way to start this lecture. This is the first of four segments for the lecture. I've been having some technical difficulties, so I have had to divide the lecture up four times. So 
After this lecture is complete, you'll be watching the second, the third, and the fourth section of the lecture. And then you'll be watching the Art of the Day presentation. Then you'll take your quiz. All right, let's move on. The history of film. Film is a time-based medium. People often refer to it as 4D or four dimensions. What are the three dimensions in real space? We have the height, the width, the depth. Well, the fourth dimension can refer to time and motion. So people casually refer to film as 4D because it incorporates time and motion. In the 19th century, Edward Muybridge fashioned a device that could photograph a rapid sequence of events. That is perhaps the beginning of what became video. Thomas Edison patented the kinetoscope, a motion picture viewing device, in 1891. That is perhaps when images, a series of images, are first strung together to create the illusion of movement in a video or in a, a piece. In 1895, the brothers Auguste and Louis Lumiere patented the cinematograph, a camera and projector in one piece of equipment. That is perhaps when filming and movies started movies as we know them. Soon after these inventions, commercial movie houses sprang up in France and the United States. So movie as movies as you know and film as, as you know, they really came into being after the year 1900, right around. That's when you started getting movie theaters that's when you started getting silent films, and then you got films with sound, and then you got films with color, and then eventually digital film and movies that we watch today. Here's a, some photos from Edward Moybridge. He's the guy that developed a mechanism for taking to, for taking a quick succession of images. This is before animation or some sort of animation machine that we know of, but this technology really started the quick succession of photos that a camera really is. Because Nothing in film actually is moving. In fact, what we're getting is a flash of a still image that goes dark, and then another flash, and then dark, flash, dark, flash, dark. And those spaces in between are so small, and the images are so short on the screen, that they start blending together and creating the illusion of movement. So Edward Moybridge's mechanism was the first for taking a quick succession of images. There's this machine, uh, the zoetrope, and there were versions of this um, before, but this is a, the first mass-produced toy, animation toy, and it was really produced by Milton Bradley, uh, from, you know, the board games, things like that, toys for children. The way the zoetrope works is there's a cylinder that spins. You spin it with your hand and you look, you follow this arrow and you look through the slit directly across into an image. As this cylinder spins, we get a flash of an image and then it's dark, blocking out what might be in between 
and then a flash of an image. And you only see the image right when it's lined up just perfectly. So that creates essentially an animation. Let's check out this video. So this is Zoetrope animation of a horse running. You look through the slits. Here we go. Looks an awful lot like Edward Moy Bridges horses. It's a great optical illusion and really video as we know it, re it, it depends on optical illusion. This is Thomas Edison's kinetoscope. These machines were would be found in like arcades or in pubs or bars and you could drop a nickel in the machine and watch a video. They were like you know 30 second videos or shorter and so that's what this guy's doing is he's watching the video his eyes go here and then there is a projection of light that goes towards the eyes and what we have here is all the film strung together and on a loop and so as I'm sure you can tell, it takes up a lot of space to have a looped film like this. And the videos were actually very short. Another thing to note is that often these machines included sound. They'd be like music box style sound. So this man actually has an old style of headphones in his head. And think of these as empty tubes that go and they clip into your ears, like the stethoscope that a doctor uses when they check your heart. Let's see some of these. These are considered the first videos. They're all very short, and they all seem very uninteresting some of them are funny but take that with a grain of salt because this was highly entertaining for people who never had seen moving images before a famous early video Scandalous. That was the whole video. This is another scandalous video. This would have been in a pub or a bar. This, this is the man I always wanted to be. This is a funny one. That's how I used to fight with my brother. Just like that.
I'm going to skip this one on grounds of animal cruelty. These are chickens fighting each other, being forced to fight each other. Who in their right mind would want to video a barber shop? Keep in mind that everything was interesting back then in terms of moving pictures. And nobody knew what to video or what to record. They just started recording everything, everyday life sometimes. This is the end of the first uh, section of the lecture. Be sure to watch section two next, two of four.